go. You ready to dive into it? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Thanks very much for being here. It is going to be an absolutely jam-packed episode today. Really looking forward to diving into it. Let's do it. Oh, I'm feeling really good, guys. I'm up and about today. A big, big video ahead. I hope you're looking forward to it and welcome back to the channel. This is the Sunday Show where I take you through five of my very best sold sales items on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. I'm joined today by Brad, Diary of a Flipper. I've been on his channel a couple of times. He's a full-time reseller. He's got a great YouTube channel, but it was about time that I got him onto mine. So we've got an awesome episode today, five of my best sold, five of Brad's best sold. And then I'm gonna take you through my weekly sales numbers as well. And believe me, you absolutely want to stick around for my weekly sales numbers because they are the best they have ever been for a seven day period. I've had a pretty good run, guys. Uh, before we dive into that, let's get into the interview that I had with Brad. A really cool episode ahead, guys. Hope you're looking forward to it. All right, well, I tell you what, this has been absolutely long overdue. Brad, Dora of a Flipper, awesome to have you on the channel, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I was supposed no, to be no, in don't. person this week. It was supposed to be in person, but unfortunately, through the uh, camera again. We're locked down yeah. down here, so I won't get too close to you, mate. Social distancing, you know, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll cross it over here. I was going to say, mate, lockdown, day three. Um, obviously, uh, not not the greatest of scenarios, especially when you're meant to be here having beers with me on the Gold Coast. You going all right throughout yeah. the lockdown? No, we're going all right, mate. It's uh, going to give us a bit of a chance to, you know, a bit of organisation and clean a few things out, a bit of stock take. I think uh, I'm going to manage it pretty well because I was planning on not doing any work. So I've got a bit of extra time this week. So um, we'll manage right. and uh, hopefully, hopefully everything goes well and I'll be up there with you in August and we'll uh, tip a couple back. We'll tip a couple back and do a better lot sold than, uh, than the live stream, that's for sure. I was going to touch on the Bulldogs as well, mate, uh, but I, I might just let that one go. Uh, no, yeah, no. Nah. Not talking footy this week, mate. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Uh, all right, mate. Well, you, you've seen these episodes. We had Chris on last week, and and that went really well from a, a bit of a collaboration aspect. So, I think I got on your channel. Uh, I think it was October last year. I had a look, and uh, I, I think I gained about forty subscribers um, from uh, from jumping on your live stream. And I think I only had a couple of hundred back then. So, um, long overdue to get you on the channel today. And, and fingers crossed for anyone out there that hasn't checked out Brad's channel, Dora the Flipper, that's part of what this live stream is today, is for you guys to jump across, check out Brad's channel, really, really cool videos, a very Australian way of doing things is how I would describe it. <laughs> Loves a frothy and uh, is very, very entertaining to uh, to all of his viewers. So go and check Brad's channel out. All the details will be in the links in the descri uh, description below. Um, we're going to go into five and five. Nothing different to what it was last week. The viewers said that they enjoyed the process of last week, so we're going to kick things off again that way. Um, yeah. I'll start us off. I've got our first item here to have a bit of a chat about, and uh, it was a good one. I've had a fairly a fairly good week this week. The the PlayStation Two bundle has been able to sell for me. So this was actually out of the video of a um, I guess a double console purchase that I made off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, where I paid about 120 bucks, and and this second bundle is is now gone, so I don't have any more out of this bundle, which is really good. Um, 195 was the overall sales price. This one popped up for me yesterday, but um, it's going to Papua New Guinea, another international sale. So I wasn't sure around. I, I didn't look into the weight or calculated postage or anything like that, and I've just put up a flat 80 dollar postage rate, and, and they've paid that. So. We've got a $275 total sale. I'm yet to put it in the post and send it off, but I don't think I'll get burned on the $80 uh, postage cost there. But um, yeah, paid 50 in the end for this allocation. And I think I've made, I wrote some notes, I've made about $150 profit. So it's uh, yeah. not out of a, uh, a flip to kick us off. No, that's that's a ripper, mate. And I've actually sold a lot of stuff to Papua New Guinea myself this week, so I don't know what's going on over there. I've uh, been sending bulk shoes over there at the minute, so... Um, Wow. It's uh, nice, nice to see a lot of stuff going over there, but this is an absolute ripper. I love that. And uh, you obviously do the same what I do when it comes to consoles and games. You get a bulk lot and all the cheap games go back with the console and usually you get more money with it. So that, that's a rip and sale there, mate. I love it. Yeah, no, absolutely right. The games that you see there in that photo, it's all the, sort of the cheaper games. I've, I've cherry-picked out the good ones and I've gone on to sell those. So, um, yeah, Papua New Guinea for me was an absolute first. But um, in, in general, international postage has just now been doing really well for me since I've introduced that. So um, that will continue, no doubt about it. Uh, now, I think you've got an absolute ripping one to kick us off here, mate. Let's, let's dive into this one. 
Yeah, so this is uh, this will be actually coming up in an upcoming video. I'm going to chat about this a bit more on my channel, but um, this wasn't meant to. Well, this was meant to be this one. I was actually last Saturday moving house with my helping her move house, and um, when I was waiting for them to get there, there was a little Lions Club that I don't usually call into because there's never much there. And I quickly swung in and had a look, and they had this in the kids section, adults large, in the kids section for three dollars. And straight away, now, if anyone that knows me would know I love a footy jumper. I'm a collector of match-worn player issue jumpers. If you do want to see a quarter of my collection, you can jump over to Instagram on Judders Jumpers, uh, mostly doggy stuff. So I do have a bit of knowledge around football jumpers. And this one is basically Port Adelaide came into the competition in 97. And this is one of the original jumpers. And usually when you see one of these, you're going to find the acrylic Seacom jumper. Seacom was like a retail style jumper back in the late 90s. And um, it's pretty rare you're actually going to find a Nike one. So this is actually made yeah. by Nike, which actually got the the sale with a bit more cash and a lot quicker. So this actually sold in 12 hours. Um, wow. I chucked it up for $299. I actually accepted an, or I actually threw out an offer of $250 because I believe that's what the value of this was. And yeah, 12 hours later, we've got the sales. So um, three bucks in the 250 and they paid their own post. That is incredible. And I, I know with the jerseys, like yourself, you, you're right into the jerseys. You know what you're looking for. But I think for the average punter, going in and, and, and seeing this item, they don't necessarily know the true value of it. So, you know, that's where the experience of doing what you're doing and, and knowing jerseys very well, playing in your niche um, has obviously come through with the goods here for you. That What was it that you said you took the best offer on? How much? 250 so, 250 yeah. That is 250. unbelievable off the purchase. And um, I know the Scots uh, sponsorship branding on Port Adelaide, for myself personally, I know that's a pretty old school when you see the Scots branding. So um, yeah, that was a... Uh, that one's a huge get, mate. I've actually got one uh, of a jumper of my own, actually, that I found in the thrift, um, which was Whoa, a very, very cool find, it. this one. Yeah, this was um, this was an early 2000s or 2010 there. Um, so this was a 2XL. It was actually my mate that found this one. Um, we, we've, we saw this in a trip to the thrift on a Thursday. I think I paid $10 for it. Um, but there's 16 Australian uh, rugby league signatures on the front and the back of this one. So... Um, I wasn't actually too sure on, on how to go about it uh, from a pricing perspective. I, I couldn't find too many comparable uh, comps to it. And, and also, too, I couldn't really be 100% sure of whose signatures they were either. Um, so when you don't have authenticity to go by, there was no certificate or anything like that, I, was, I felt a little bit left in the dark around how to go about this one. But um, I've just thrown it up for 170 to hope that it'll end up around the 150 on a best offer and someone will just take the punt on it. Um, Obviously, put it all into the description saying that I wasn't sure, but I could I could determine a few of the signatures on there. Um, and then sure enough, full price of $170 has finally come through. So um, no doubt this will go up into the uh, the, the pub room of, of someone's place or, or their man cave, but um, it's probably a, an awesome one to get framed and, and set up at home. Absolutely. That's a ripper, mate. That's a, that's a good one to find. Yeah, yeah. I've got to ask, so I've got to ask. You said your mate uh, found that, helped you find that one. Did you buy him a VB or have you bought him one yet? I'll tell you what, I, I 100% owe him. Yeah, I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't got him a VB yet, but he certainly deserves one. It was a ripping get. I, I don't know how this thing, it literally must have hit the shelf. I think the, the big yeah. thing with the Optrop are timing is everything, as you know. And um, oh, I, and also, too, going in the morning, I think, when, the, when they first open up at 9 a.m., get yourself in there, see if there's been anything put up onto the shelf uh, an hour or two before. And I think that's where we've struck gold here. So he's done very well. And he's not a thrifter at all. He's just held this one up two minutes in the store and gone, what do you think about this one? So uh, <laughs> he, he's uh, a bit of beginner's luck there, no doubt about it. Here we go. This one, this one. Um, anyone that does know me would know I like dabbling in the uh, vintage scene too. I love a good vintage T-shirt. So I buy a lot through wholesale. I buy a lot directly online. And then obviously thrifting is the, uh, the best way to find it because that's the cheapest way. But this one here um, went this week. This is actually a bootleg Metallica T-shirt. So a lot of people get confused around the whole bootleg and fake thing. Fake is basically someone that's trying to imitate a vintage T-shirt and make a lot of money on it. A bootleg is a knockoff shirt from back in the day that you used to see. You know, when you go to a concert and you see the guys selling them cheap at the front and all that sort of stuff or at the markets or whatever. So they're still a vintage T-shirt. And funnily enough, some of them go for better money. But um, this week, this was probably the best one that I sold. I did only get the 50 for it. I believe it's probably worth – I could have got a little bit more. But the reason I took the offer on this, I actually got 
sold this in a lot to someone. They bought about 200 bucks worth of stuff off me, another reseller, I think. They've wow. um, come through and sent out a lot of offers and I've accepted some, haven't accepted others, but uh, I thought I'd show this one today just purely on the fact it's a bootleg. So um, don't be scared of the bootleg stuff. Just definitely be scared of the fake stuff, but um, sometimes it is hard to tell. But yeah, this one, uh, very happy to get that out for 50 bucks. Unreal sale there, mate. And I think what you're very good at is that um, you do offer a lot of uh, help and advice. I know that I've flicked a few items through to you and you can pretty much tell straight away if it's bootleg, if it's fake, if it's, you know, one to steer, steer clear of and not put on eBay. So, um, you know, I think your knowledge in this space has been um, has been pretty helpful. And I'm sure it's not just me. I'm sure there's a lot of other resellers out there that have got you to thank for, for certain items that they've found in the thrift. So really good stuff. I've got one here. Uh, which is one that I'll pick up every now and again. I, to be honest, I do, don't really do enough garage sales as I probably should. I know you're a big garage sale man and you like to get out on a Saturday. Um, I generally find that come a Saturday morning, I'm, I'm pretty pooped from the uh, the full week of reselling and I don't really want to go about it. So um, I've, I've steered clear, but I did pick this one up at a garage sale a few weeks ago now. Um, they still sell the cassette tape players, believe it or not, the old school cassette tape players. So... I think this is the second or the third one that I've been able to sell. 135 was the asking price, was the sale price on this one. Um, I, it did go to Darwin, and Darwin, I'm I'm terrible with postage uh, through Australia Post. I'm always paying a little bit more. Uh, so I think this one ended up going for about 30 bucks to Darwin in post. Um, all in all, I think I made about 65, 70 bucks worth of profit uh, on this one here. So. A nice little get found at a garage sale. I think it's a great place to source your items if uh, if you're a newbie out there. Yeah, absolutely. I love a good garage sale because that's where you can just cop some absolute steals. I find, you know, yeah. the the op shops, they, they like to do a bit of research, whereas sometimes, you know, Nana or Mum, they're just passing on stuff to get rid of it and they're, they're not going to sort of sting you too much. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of them. Unreal. So here we have... Uh, a little action figure. So, Have a look at this one, Andre the Giant. Wow, wait. Andre the Giant. Uh, 55 bucks plus post out of this one. So I did a video a little while ago. Something I like to do with sourcing is buy bulk lots off eBay. And I actually bought a bulk lot of these Hasbro figures on eBay. As much as I wanted to keep a lot of them, um, I have kept a couple, but most are gone now. I've actually made a lot of profit on this. And this one here, he went for 55 this week. So he's just right. an example. And basically all these are, though, mate, I've got a couple here. So we've got uh, just for, to show off how small these buggers are. Yeah. We've got Ted DBRC and the Mountie Man there. And they all have, with these, you've got to watch that their actions are working. So, you know, his arms, spring-loaded arm there. Um, yeah. He's got the old stomp. So that's one to always watch out when you've got these things. But uh, they're very collectible. They were made in 91 through to 90 – or 1990 through to 94, I think, of the old wrestlers. And uh, there was a line done by Hasbro. They're very popular, very collectible now. They're not the most collectible or the most expensive getting out there, but they do really go for good money, basically – I sold a couple of the damaged ones for around the $12 plus postmark and the rest have gone anywhere between $30 to $70 a piece just for one individual toy. So these are a typical one if you're in an op shop and you're looking through those big tubs of you know, little, little toys and that, you think it might be crap and it's not worth your time. Sometimes if you find something like this down the bottom, you've got 50 bucks out of potentially 50 cents. So um, yeah. that's why I talk about it all the time. Get on the toys. There's so much money to be made. It's incredible. It's not a, an area of focus for myself personally, I, just because I'm just the knowledge base just isn't there. But I know you've even got a couple of recent videos as well talking about this on your channel. Um, you know the, the the toy side of things, which I'm I'm just not up on. If I was to go into the op shop, like you say, and go digging through the toys, what would be the one thing that you would say that I should look out for? What what? So say Andre the Giant here. How did you know? Was it Hasbro? Was it the year? What what are you mainly looking for? Uh, when it comes to the wrestlers, I think you've got to look at it. If, if you see a wrestler in there and he's under a dollar, you're getting him because, the, you know, the minimum you're going to get for it's 10 bucks. So I think it's always going to be worth your time. At the end of the day, you know, you can bundle it up. But for me, when I'm looking through that or if I was new to the toys and I don't look at toys much, I want to look at colours. So... If you're looking at, you know, those action figures that have got your bright greens, pinks, orange, those vibrant the vibrant colours that scream 80s and 90s at you, it might be worth having a look at the toy. And uh, you're not going to see from here, but if they have some little markings there, they're going to have a mm -hmm. date. They're going to have the manufacturer of who made it. If you see that it's from the 80s, from the 90s, there's a chance it's going to be worth more than 10 bucks at least. So um, right. I'm always right. looking at those colours because some of those toys, especially those like, you know, the early Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lines and um, 
I sp- spoke about the toxic crusaders, stuff like that can go from, you know, upwards of 40, 50 plus. So it's, I'm looking at those colours and then I'm looking at the branding on the back. So, and uh, that's going to give you a rough guide of um, the, the year it was made. So, And then yeah. once again, I've spoken about it on my channel. If you're not familiar with who it is, Google Lens app will help you 90% of the time. Simply take a photo of it and it'll probably give you a match on who it is. It's incredible. It's incredible. Definitely go and check out Brad's channel if you if you if you even got some toys lying around the house that you might be thinking could be worth a few dollars based on what Brad's saying here. Because chances are that's also probably the best place to find it, the kids' house uh, oh, yeah. in, the, in the spare bedroom. So uh, that's an awesome one, mate. My one uh, that I've got up next is, uh, to be honest, I think the reason why this one is held around for a slightly longer sales cycle is the photo. Um, I, I don't typically take my photos like that when I'm, I'm doing my hats. Um, sort of the top-down look at this. I, I, I cringe when I look at it because it was back when I sort of first started out taking photos. And I personally think that this, if this was shot sort of more straight on, uh, it would have been a, a bit more appealing and, and probably captured the hat better. But, um, you know, through laziness, I just left it up and, and hoped that uh, someone would see that it is still a good hat. And uh, I got the full sale price of $48.95. Obviously, a Mitchell and Ness. Uh, when you are looking at hats, and I've got to say, my my skill level with hats, I think, is pretty good. I can sort of pick out in a in a hat bundle at an op shop, um, you know, a forty, fifty, hundred dollar hat, and there are quite a lot of them out there if you if you're looking for the right thing, like anything. Um, Again, this one was another international sale. This one's off to Canada. Um, so it's a, an NFL, for those out there who don't know the New England Patriots, NFL football team over in the States. So I did think that this might go uh, international and surely someone in, in Canada has finally picked it up. So um, hats for me, a very quick win on, on a postage front, just putting it into a small box with some uh, some butcher's paper is typically how I do it. And uh, $18 based on the weight is uh, is what I can, can send it off to the States for uh, with the My Post discount that I get. So you know, you might think that it's quite a scary thing to, to send a hat that could get damaged in International Post. But by going through that process, I've been able to sell even a, a Monster Energy hat that I put up on my Instagram as well. That went for $100 this week. So I've actually had some really great results um, looking at the hats. And um, I do think they're a, an item in the op shop that people do pass up on. So um, I, was, I was pretty happy to get both of those uh, sold this week. So here we've got a uh, vinyl record. This is another area that I like to get in. And yeah. Yeah. And I'm bringing this one up. So it was the 40 bucks plus the postage. And the reason I'm bringing this one up is because I think a lot of people sleep on the compilation stuff. So this yep. is just a compilation. It's not a particular band. And I've shared on my channel, I've sold some ACDC stuff for, you know, upwards of $200. Some of it is, especially first print, is absolutely crazy. But some of these compilation um, albums can go for mad money because, Back in the day, you know, they were, they were kind of cheap and um, it gave, I think this one in particular had your classics on there. There was ACDC, a bit of Sabbath, Guns N' Roses, all just those great bands that everyone loved. And it was a cheap way for people to buy a record and listen to all these great songs and not have to fork out for the album. So um, some of these aren't really that easy to get now. And wow. I quite often, can't, like if I'm in an op, in an op shop, Finding records is very hard. You're coming across the same crap every time. You're digging through piles and piles of them to come out with nothing. But quite often I see a lot of these compilation ones and they kind of look tacky. This one, I think this one looks great on the front. The cover art's amazing. But yeah. some of them look really tacky. But when you look on the back, you might actually see a lot of bands that you're familiar with. And then when you actually comp them out, they can be anywhere between $20, 30 $40. So um, it's not often you're paying any more than a dollar or two for a vinyl record. So um, that's why I thought I'd show this one today. 40 bucks, it's not your high end of sales, but it's only a compilation album and yeah, very happy with that. Um, I've had this one sitting there for a while though. That's a problem with some of these. I wouldn't say they're quick. I can't remember when I purchased this one. Yep. Um, I think this one might've even been out of a bulk lot, but um, you know, they, they don't seem to tick over straight away, but they do. And when they do, you, you'll get your money for them. So happy with that I know that you do the vinyls pretty comfortably and pretty regularly across the board. I'm, I, based actually off watching your videos, always try to have a look at the vinyl records wherever, wherever I'm in an op shop. And I have never found one of any significant value to, to go on to resell. So I, I just, yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's your neck of the woods or, or your knowledge base. But um, No, I, I, see, I, I won't lie. I don't get a lot from op shops either. Um, occasionally I get bits and pieces. Garage sales is where I've got majority of mine. So yep. quite often, if they advertise for vinyl, a lot of the old blokes that run market stalls and all that, 
they want to get there and there's, you know, a lot of craziness around the vinyl if it gets advertised. So be prepared for that if you're going in there. And yeah. that's where it comes to down. You've got to have a bit of a guess. If they if you've got to pay up for it, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're getting. But that's sort of the main way I've sourced them. And the other one is um, I advertise for them too. So people come to me. I advertise on Facebook and I do letter box drops. So um, that's how I get on them. You do it. You do it very, very well. I'd love to because I know the I know the value in them. Um, my last one that I've got here is the is the Wrangler jeans, brand new with tags. And um, I guess this is the power of you and I being on on places like Instagram and on YouTube and having a bit of a presence uh, on social media. Because I've actually picked this one up off uh, someone that I've connected with through Instagram and and generally the community um, who's had about twenty or thirty items. I've actually done it twice now with him. Um, so I've, I've been able to nab about 40 odd items and, and he does wholesale prices for me. He's a, a ripping contact to have. Um, this was was one of them. He gave me some brand new with tags, um, Wrangler, um, what is it, the Striker, uh, men's tapered blue wash jeans and, and a really good size there, 36 waist. So um, these actually had a $160 tag on them, but I, I did end up selling them for the, the $79.95. Probably could have pushed a few more dollars with this one. Um, but off the off the sort of the wholesale pricing that he was selling him at, I, I picked up about twenty items for about eight dollars. So, as much as I wanted to highlight the item here and say that obviously Wrangler, Wrangler jeans do go on to sell well, I really more so wanted to put into the video to say that even if you don't have a YouTube channel or an Instagram, just just the power of telling people what you do and and you know communicating even even to within your own you know sort of social group um, personally, um, you never know what you, what people have that they don't need or, or are happy to get rid of. Um, so even on Instagram, I think that's more of a commonly um, you know used place for resellers out there is to have an Instagram page. Um, even just putting up you know posts saying that you're willing to purchase um, through Instagram from other resellers. Um, very very simple process, and um, you know you can get your hands on some pretty good stuff like this one. Yeah, love it, mate. I've uh, used that to my. Well, it's helped me a lot too with uh, just working with other people in the community. They just want to get out of certain things and. Yeah, I'm, I'm always looking to buy certain areas. So, uh, this one here, I'm going to – so this is basically what I collect, the player issue, the match-worn jumpers, and this one is a player issue, Irving Mosquito. Um, he's a little jet that plays for the Essendon Bombers. And yeah. this sold this week. I don't know if it's because it is Indigenous around this week. He's a good young Indigenous player. Unfortunately, he's injured at the minute. But uh, this, pl- this jumper was – issued to him and the jumper is a very unique one and that's what i always look out for so if you're seeing just a random you know jumper in the op shop um it's pretty rare you're going to come across a player issue but people do i've seen it happen but um i'm always looking for those unique jumpers that you don't see often because they always go up in value and for example bulldogs had their thor one only two years ago and they're worth bloody fortune already because not many get made it's the same with the indigenous ones one thing if you're looking for sort of if you're in an op shop you do see a footy jumper basically the best way to tell with a modern jumper everything on it is sublimated so he's number which means it's in the print on the the jumper itself, his number, yeah. all the sponsorships, everything. Uh, I've got a couple here on cue to show off, mate. Um, since it's Indigenous round, this is actually a match-worn Tommy Liberatore Indigenous wow. jumper um, from 2019. You, so you, you, actually... you wouldn't be parting with that one, would you? No, oh, never, mate. This is uh, always going to be kept. He actually, yeah. while he wore this jumper, he pulled two Brownlow votes. So, um, wow. But what you're looking for is if you spot these little GPS pouches here, Basically, yeah. this is how they track the player and where they're going on the ground and everything they're up to. Back, I don't know if people remember back, these have been in since about 2009 to 11, all the team sort of different years. But back in the day, they used to wear those uh, men's bras. But um, <laughs> they, So you're looking for these pouches, but they're they're different every year. So he's another one. He's a Barry Hall, if anyone remembers Big Bazza. Um, this jump is nearly bigger than me, but uh, it's a bit yeah. of a different pouch there. So you just got these little pouches and that's where those – um gps things went so and there wouldn't be any that you could no, nothing retail would have that pouch would it so that's a real good no. telltale sign yeah no the retail i have seen like um i have seen a couple of retails but i think they're more a prototype so what that is you know it was a test jumper so there'll be no number on the back they'll still have the gps pouch but they've kind of made the jumper that's a bit of a tester when they've made their new products so they don't go for as much if it's a player's jumper, the price is always going to depend on who the player is and whatnot. You know, I've seen certain players go for thousands of dollars, whereas your rookies, not as much. Um, wow. It's a very it's a very hard one and, you know, it's going to be rare to find that in an op shop. 
me as a collector, I just I buy this stuff for myself. Like I don't really buy this with intent to flip. But sometimes at the moment they're auctioning off the Indigenous round jumpers, and I'm trying to get off my hands on a doggies one. Uh, I've been bidding on the bond, but he's upwards of a thousand bucks already. So oh, um, you know, I'm going to sell a couple of jumpers. Got to sell a couple of jumpers to uh, make way, you know, make way them, and then bring in a new one. So, um, but yeah. two fifty on that, pretty happy with that. Well, especially when you're a collector of jerseys yourself. I mean, if you can trade a few off that you don't necessarily need for your collection, like that one there with the Bombers one, um, obviously a few extra dollars in your pocket to go get the ones you want. So um, you, you do the jerseys pretty well. And if you do want to check out more of the jerseys, um, the Instagram page as well is, is probably a good one to get your hands on and, and have a look at that on Brad's page. So I'll put all the links to that in the description below. Um, we are done, mate. That, that's five, five yeah. a piece. So it's... Yeah. Um, what an absolute pleasure uh, getting you on, mate. Now, I, I do enjoy this format. I personally learn a lot as we hit the record button and just have a bit of a chat myself. So um, hopefully the viewers out there have, uh, have learned a little bit too and uh, and they can be jumping onto your page already and, and, and giving you a quick sub uh, on Dora Flipper's YouTube channel because he's doing some great things. So thank you very much, mate, for, for jumping on the channel. Like I said, well overdue, but um, awesome to finally have you on. <laughs> No, I appreciate it, mate. Thanks for getting me on. It's been good to have another chat. It's uh, As I said, it's a shame we weren't sitting in a pub doing it, but hopefully in a couple of months we'll go again. But really love the new format, mate. Uh, good on you. I'm looking forward to seeing who else you get on here and all the uh, beautiful faces within the community. So thank Absolutely. you very much, mate. No dramas, mate. We'll speak soon. So there you have it, guys. They were our 10 best sold sales items of the week. Hopefully, you got some value out of those. A big thank you to Brad for jumping on today's episode. Let's dive into my weekly sales numbers because it has been a pretty good week, guys. I'll pull the table up and I'll give you a quick look here. I've been able to sell 37 items this week and you wouldn't realize that uh, if you've watched past episodes, I'm generally around 50 items a week. So that has been slightly less. But the big kicker here, guys, total revenue, $2,383. An average sale price of $64 an item. Just incredible incredible stuff. Uh, the fees are 324, the postage costs are 372, and the inventory that I bought throughout the week, 171 bucks. So guys, I have made $1,515 in net cash flow. So absolutely by far and away the best week that I have ever had, one from an inventory perspective, but even two from a net cash flow perspective to actually make $1,500 clean uh, is an incredible result and I'm very happy about it. Now, if you watched last week's episode, my net cash flow was $500. So what a week can make. You know, I've been able to triple my money from 500 to 1500 in just the space of seven days. The answer that I've got for you here with all of this is never dip your head on a bad week. Keep doing the stuff that you know comes to work and you will reap the benefits uh, in the end. And look, it has taken me a week to turn things around. I've now done a net cash flow of $2,000 over a two week period and I'm averaging a thousand a week, which is what I like to do. So don't get discouraged by bad weeks is what I've got to say for you. Keep plugging away, keep doing the little things right and eBay will turn it around for you and give you some good sales results as we have seen here. So hope you've enjoyed that episode, guys. There was a lot of information in that video that I had with Brad. It is a slightly longer form of video, but I think I'm gonna continue doing these because they are a lot of fun and I love connecting with the guys in the community. And I love bringing you guys some additional items that you might not typically see get sold from myself. So hope you've enjoyed it, guys. If you're still here watching now, I truly can't thank you enough. Hit the like button to show your support. And until next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.